let's move on to the fourth main topic today. And our fourth main topic today gets submitted to us by Mark Wallace, who writes, Last week, Deadline reported box office tracking for Bad Boys 3 and Doolittle. Bad Boys, and of course, these are both coming out in January on the same weekend. Bad Boys, budgeted at $90 million, is expected to make 40 to $45 million over the four-day Martin Luther King weekend. Doolittle, budgeted at $175 million, is expected to make 25 to $30 million over the same four-day period. What are your thoughts on the tracking? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, Mark. And first of all, really, I think the story here is Doolittle. Because let's get Bad Boys out of the way here for a second. Bad Boys, you know it's going to have, to a degree, a de facto built-in audience. There's going to be a certain demographic of people that are going to go see Bad Boys no matter what and all that kind of stuff. So I think on a $90 million budget, look, I've always said, if you can open your movie to about 50% in domestic opening weekend to about 40 to 50% of what your overall budget was, you're doing okay. And I think like a 40 to $45 million opening, and by the way, this is just long-range projections, this could come in significantly higher. But if it does come in at about $45 million, yeah, job well done. It's, it's At that point, just domestically opening weekend, it will have made half its production budget just on opening weekend. I think they'll be doing well. The bigger question, though, is, and has always been, Rob, the issue of Doolittle. This is a movie... That, by the way, I think the trailers look pretty charming. I I think the trailers look pretty charming. The question, though, is, has always been, is this a movie? Like, when we first started hearing whispers about what its production budget was going to be, I think all of us, it raised some red flags in all of us about, wait a minute, 100? The first rumors were 150, then there was like 190. From what we're hearing now, it does look like it's going to be around 175 million, which is still astronomically expensive for a film. Is there really that many? Because you're talking about if they do a standard, if they do a standard release, Rob, a standard release of this film, then all of a sudden now, you're talking about a movie that is going to have to make north of $600 million dollars just to break even. Yeah. Just to break even. And can they do that? And yes, Robert Downey Jr. is a big star. But I have proposed for a couple of years now that it's not that people love Robert Downey Jr., which he's great. People love Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. And I remember when he put out his film, The Judge. Right. Which I appreciated, but I liked The Judge. I thought The Judge was actually really solid. Nobody went to go see it. Nobody went to go see it. And I actually, I still contend that the disappointment of The Judge is what is one of the things that propelled Robert Downey Jr. Because remember, at that time, Robert Downey Jr. was in the middle of this very public thing with Marvel about whether or not he was going to resign with Marvel. Guess what? After The Judge came out and failed pretty badly, all of a sudden, there's a new contract with Robert Downey Jr. I... And look, let's be clear. I'm not being down on Robert Downey. He's fantastic. But the reason Endgame made two plus billion dollars is not because Robert Downey Jr. is in it. It's not because Chris Evans is in it. It's not because Chris Hemsworth is in it. It's not because Scarlett Johansson is in it. It's not because and blah, 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 blah. It's because Kevin Feige built this incredible world. They matched perfect actors for their roles, which Robert Downey Jr. was a perfect match for for Iron Man, clearly. But I remember asking Rob, we talked about it on this show, about I I don't know that Robert Downey Jr. or anybody not named The Rock, and even The Rock is a question mark, can single-handedly come into a franchise that is iffy and on his star name power alone can carry that movie to a guaranteed 600 million plus. And these tracking numbers, and again, these are long-range tracking. Doolittle could come in higher. It could come in significantly higher. But again, it just emphasizes that question again. And I, I'm, I am guessing that this movie is going to be a significant flop. I don't want it to flop. I want it to be great. I'm curious. I, I'm intrigued by the trailers. I want this movie to be great, and I want it to do successful, to be successful, and be wonderful. But. I got to tell you, right now, if I have to look at a movie and pick a movie that I think is really going to be a big flop considering how much it costs, I'm thinking it's going to be Doolittle. So I think it's going to be the first big, major, significant, overt flop of the year. 
Um, and, and I hope I'm wrong. But anyway, Rob, you're looking at this. How do you assess all this? Well, <laughs> I think there are movies that get made that either studios have the rights, they look in their libraries, and they're like, what can we remake? You know, what what do we already own? What is an IP that's familiar? And for whatever reason, someone thought that about Dr. Doolittle. I mean, I remember growing up, that song, Talk to the Animals, was, was a song I knew when I was like eight. But I don't think in this day and age that audiences around the world are clamoring for a new Dr. Doolittle movie. I mean, maybe they are, but talking CG animals are not the novelty that they used to be. And while Robert Downey Jr. coming off of Tony Stark uh, and all of the wild success, as you eloquently put it, people like Tony Stark as Iron Man. I don't, And they like him as Sherlock Holmes, who's kind of a badass as he plays Sherlock Holmes. But I don't think... I don't think that the world is is has been waiting for a new Dr. Doolittle movie. And like you, I I don't want it to fail. I don't want any movie to fail. Uh especially a movie like this that has probably some amazing effects work that took forever to animate and the voice acting talent that's going to be on display. Who wants a movie to fail? But the question remains, who greenlit this movie? And who is it for? I mean, is it for family audiences that now it, it's the family audiences that are going to see the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies? Now, this seems kind of like a throwback that, hey, if it costs 50 million, maybe it could be a big family hit. But at almost 200 million dollars, it's almost like they're they're just expecting the Marvel Cinematic Universe magic, the pixie dust, whatever Kevin Feige has created, <laughs> will just be spread to this movie because it's in close proximity because of an actor. And as we all know, we do not live. There are articles being written about how we no longer live in the age of the movie star. And I think we live in an age of stars that are perfectly paired with certain characters and they become indelible. But that doesn't translate to another movie or another franchise. And I think in this case, John, I, I feel like I'm standing in, in train tracks. I know the train's coming. It's nighttime. I can see the light bearing down on me. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm not going to step off the track. I'm just going to let the train roll right by and flatten me like a pancake in a Warner Brothers cartoon as they go right off a cliff of box office doom. I... But and again, I, I hope this look. And by the way, this movie could come. First of all, the reviews could come out early right. and be shining for it and yep. then in, entice some more people to go see it opening weekend. And then maybe all those people see it and love it and start spreading the word about it like they did for Jumanji when Jumanji came out with yep. The Rock and Kevin Hart, uh, the, the first one that they did together. And maybe this thing could be a big hit. But right now it's not looking good. I'm not hearing a lot of people being very excited for it. Um, I hope it's great. I hope it's great, but I do too. I, I'm just I'm just not hearing a lot of pump for it, guys. Question is for you: What are you thinking about this Doolittle projection right now? Do you think it's going to be a big hit? Do you think it's going to be a significant flop? Do you think it's going to be somewhere in between? How are you? Are you excited for the Doolittle movie in and of itself? It's only it still feels like it's a movie that's coming in four months, but it's actually coming in less than a month. So, how are you guys feeling about it right now? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.